I should probably get something to drink, shouldn't I? And we're live. And welcome back, everybody. We exist. Uh, because Calistari is back for our season finale today. Uh, but before we get into all that, tell everybody who you are. Let's go in overlay order as usual. Sin, Rainy, Road, Nins. Do the things. Hi. Um, I'm Sinziak, the Sunflower Sovereign of Painted Nail and the He, They pronoun. Um, today, I will be playing Rue, who also has um, He, They pronouns and is um, very, very, very quirky and enjoyable um, person who, I don't know, for all practical purposes, could be dreaming or awake and would not know the difference, honestly, at this point. Hi, I'm Rainy. Uh, pardon. My pronouns are she, they. Uh, I am the, I guess... Who knows what I am anymore? Uh, I play Alyssa Vesper, also she, they, and she is our necromantic archer for tonight's evening. That I'm Monroe, my pronouns are he, they, and I will be playing Danica, whose pronouns are she, they, are Danny, just Danny. Hello, I'm Ninbins. In real life, I'm Beard Mole Combo. In Aether, I'm Beard Leaf Combo. Thank you. <laughs> Man, how the hell am I supposed to follow that up? Hi, I'm Eric, aka <laughs> Eldritch Crow, and I'll be your narrator for the day. Um, as usual. Uh, so yeah, today's our season finale. Uh, some things to clear up before we get started. Uh, we will be taking a uh, kind of mid-season break after this because I have some life things happening. So we most likely won't be back, uh, you know, with full bi-weekly episodes until around October-ish. Um... There will be an epilogue episode after this at some point, but we may pre-record that. We're still figuring things out. And that'll just be, you know, downtime and wrap-up things and so on and so forth. Besides that, uh, we're going to be trying out a lot of new things today, which is going to be fun. Um, I'm going to be panicking while I run a full tactical combat for the first time in this system, I think. And uh, we're going to have a time, and it'll be exciting and good and all this uh, fun stuff. But before we get started, uh, last time, y'all prepared for a siege. And y'all did uh, freakishly well doing so, in my opinion. <laughs> um, so we had a few things happen. One, uh, Barry, our resident um, plant and all things living expert, grew some uh, semi-sentient auto-firing uh, sap-throwing ballista. And then Alyssa summoned a village full of ghosts to man those ballista. And so now there are just, you know, auto firing ghost powered giant arrow catapults around. Uh, and that's not even the most brain breaking thing that happened in the session. Because on the other side of things, too, we had Rue pull off some shenanigans and hide the entire population of the nearby town of Maplehaven in a pocket dimension as this collection of nightmare beasts approaching. Um, or I guess more accurately, uh, it would be a pocket dream, so to speak, uh, which was then anchored to a book on ship writing and hidden in a living library. I don't even know what that sentence is anymore. <laughs> Call me Franklin Richards. Yeah, effectively. Um, so that happened. And then uh, Danica and Alyssa went... <laughs> Very true. Uh, Danica and Alyssa went off into uh, the dream woods to find a few of the townsfolk who were trapped within their own dreams and managed, with Barry's help, to get them out of those traps and into the pocket dimension as well. So, 
uh, the townsfolk are, for now at least, safe as these nightmares attempt to breach a portal into the physical realm. And should they breach that portal, they will more than likely find a way to find that book and get into the pocket dimension. And then at the end of the session, Barry noticed that their friendly neighborhood vampire doctor, Vinat, is missing. And using Barry's particular skills, Barry uh, decided to teleport themselves to the flower for communication that they gifted to Vinat and appeared within a magic circle while they got to watch Vinat and Epoch, a new uh, quote-unquote ally of the party and brother to Halcyon, who uh, has particular connections to Danica, forging and creating what appeared to be a hybridized creature out of Black Bane Horde Crystal, the spirit of a nightmare giant, and a host who appeared to be, based on descriptions, Jasper, Vinat's prior student. And we open just as these two figures, after bantering slightly, are finishing the ritual to bind this nightmare spirit to this new host. And you can see the crystal is growing up and creating almost this armor-like carapace. And it's just reaching what would be the bottom of Jasper's jaw and cheeks and about to form almost like a helmet. And Epoch looks over at Vinat and just says, Right, well, once this is finished, I'll take the creature to the staging area. I'll leave you to deal with that one. And Epoch just sort of nods to uh, Barry standing in this magic circle. So Barry, what are you doing in the interim? <clears throat> um, Barry, you know, feeling the ground. Um, he is going to Touching first some grass. pull out his, his, his tuning fork um, and then just smack it against the barrier he's in. Okay, you get um, a certain... How deep does it go? That is an interesting question. Uh, you would get the sense that this barrier um, is projected upwards from where the sigils are carved in the ground. It does not go down into the earth. Great. So I'm, you know, I'm just going to um, dig my toes into the dirt, into the soft loamy dirt there and uh, grow a couple of roots. All right. While I'm doing that, I'm going to stare at the people remaining. Um, and I'm going to say, I know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for a future, I can't say I see one for you. What I do see is a woman with a very particular set of skills and an incredibly wrathful desire to deliver revenge. So, if you want to live, I suggest you surrender now. Epoch freezes and tilts his head. An Epoch reminder has short cropped reddish hair um, and wears these sort of lordly mage-esque robes in blue and silver. I can't remember what I originally described its color scheme as, but it's blue and silver now. Um, and he tilts his head at you. And even though he knows you've been addressing Vinat, who is about to speak, Epoch looks at you and says, And what right have you to show such impudence in face of a king? Um, out of the dirt just outside of the barrier, a, a pair of arms are going to rise up. And, and then I'm going to bounce out. And I'm leaving the arms there. Okay. 
in that moment, um, you will see Epoch finishes the ritual and there's a burst, almost like a ripple outwards of this nightmare magic. So the last thing you get to see, Beria, as you teleport out is you hear a loud chuckle from Epoch. Half amused, half cackle. As Vinat takes on kind of a snarling appearance. And as that ripple hits them both, you watch for a moment images flicker. It's like it's almost like wind blowing out a candle for a split second before it relights itself. Epoch's image shifts and you see um for player knowledge, I can't remember if Rue would have revealed this or not, but for player knowledge, you see black eyes, completely pale skin, and long-ish, ragged red hair. The figure who had hidden the crystal in Zira's dream. Aha! For Vanat, you see a moment where Almost Agent Smith Matrix-like, his face ripples and warps as the magic passes through him, and you see the hair changes color from that kind of pale gray to a black. You see it attempts to grow for a moment. You see the bone structure shift in, the, in his face. And then after that ripple is through him, it all goes back to being Vinat again. Barry, where do you teleport to? Uh, to mom. Okay, you... Mom. We'll say you appear uh, at the foot of uh, Silk Mother, the giant uh, kind of star and nebula patterned Silk Moth. Ah, break ones. You've arrived. Yes. I also received a very unsettling surprise. Child, why is it you do not come to me with good news? <laughs> Look, I arrived in town hoping for a party, and instead I got party crashes. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> and what, may I ask, is this surprise? Oh, Epoch, um, is bad. Not a good boy. Um, so, Nins, since you're the one, uh, in this instance saying this information, where do you want Halcyon to be when you deliver this message? Oh, right behind me. Like, he should be standing there. Just, you know, in the middle of a conversation with the Silk Mother that I just interrupted. And then immediately accused his brother. So there's a moment. Alcyon is in his full war regalia. He is in full... It looks almost beetle-esque armor in the way it catches light. Out right, here looking like Lubu. Very mm -hmm. much so. Um, with a, it, it's basically a full face helm, and instead of any kind of plume out the top, it's just flame. And you can see that there is a cloak off the back shoulders from under the pauldrons that is also a rippling orange and gold flame itself. On his hip, he wears a broadsword, which is, uh, not necessarily in design, but absolutely in motif. Um, the twin to Danica's uh, rapier. And you hear that blade get drawn. And he actually sticks it point down in the roof of the building and leans over your shoulder and into your ear says, I recommend you come bearing some sort of proof sapling. That's oh, not yeah, no, an absolutely. accusation you make lightly. 
No, he's quite large. But that's besides the point. Anyway, um, I uh, sort of um, write some runes uh, in the air around my head. Um, and I would like to spend a point of potential here to use Sigildry uh, to replay what I saw. So akin to sort of what you did in copying down the books earlier, mm -hmm. except now, instead of taking in information, you're projecting it. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll say because you're burning a resource here, I'm not going to make you make a skill check for it. Um, so there is going to be sort of this holographic, it, it's almost like um, holographic, but the pieces making up the image are flower petals and dandelion tufts and sort of all of these natural things and debris pulled up from the world around you. Um, and it has that ephemeral feeling and it is absolutely like a full size projection of what happened. So you can tell it's epoch and you can still slightly get the details of the shifts that happened when the ripple went through them. And Halcyon, who you cannot see his expression due to the faceplate of his helmet being down in this sort of imposing, very knightly, um, fully armored stance. Leans back. He had originally had his weight forward on the blade in order to speak over your shoulder. Pulls the blade out. Feeds it. And I think he will just have a moment where he quietly exits. Oh, um, I also need your permission for something that's slightly non-standard. Drake would. Do you ever do anything that's standard? <laughs> I walk. On a rare occasion. Well, recently I've done a lot less walking. Trouble just feels tight. Do you feel this will benefit our defenses? Oh yes, there's a, a very big nasty monster that they've taken the soul of the big giant in the forest. Put it in a nice little metal capsule with horns and big fists and large feet to step on the small little one. Adira is off to the side hearing this description and just pinches the bridge of their nose and says, So you're telling me they took the soul of the first and only nightmare giant we know of in existence in existence, and implanted it into another creature. Yes. It. <laughs> At that point, Silkweather turns kind of one big eye to you, uh, Barry, and just says, In that case, do what you will. Great. This is going to be great. I hope. I worry about your particular excitement. Over the oh, I'm going to need access to the portal. You have such access? Great. I, I then walk to, like, um, the very edge of it and just sit there and put my feet in. Okay. Your feet are dangling in a cosmic pond. And now they're growing roots into the um, other side of that cosmic pond. Indeed they are. So with that, uh, we're going to have a quick moment where Halcyon has quietly exited. Danica and Alyssa, I'm going to say you've already returned at this point and you've been doing a number of small preparations here and there. For example, Danica using some magic to reinforce the gates 
of um, the kind of dream realm side of Thornwood Bastion, uh, which is what you'll be defending. Rue, you and Adira have perhaps maybe 30 minutes left before the horde appears and have just finished that I'm in a domain and sealing it away and all these things. Danica, as you're working, a fully armored Halcyon, like armored to the nines that you've never quite seen before because you've more seen him with his helmet off and things like that, um, approaches you. Doesn't say anything, but is approaching. It is very clearly intent on you. Uh, I think I'll pause what I'm doing to meet him halfway. Do you say anything? Well, you're not usually this direct. As you speak, he just talks to you. And he just says, Sorry, I needed this for a moment. And there's a little bit of a catch to his voice. And he just hugs you. It's maybe a little bit longer than it should be. You don't have to apologize for wanting a hug. There's a deep inhale, and you can hear him fighting some kind of emotion back. And then behind the helmet, the voice that comes out, it's almost like you feel a mask sliding in place where he's no longer Halcyon as you know him, but he's Halcyon, the Dreadwatch General. And he just sort of stands up a little bit straighter and has hands on sort of either side of your upper biceps and shoulders and just says, It's about to be a very difficult fight. Whatever happens. I love you. And then he, without hearing or waiting for a response, he will step up to the wall. Or actually, no, this would technically be kind of, this would technically be in the dream realm. So he's actually just going to step out of the gate and start wandering off into the woods in the direction that he knows the Nightmare Horde is coming from. Which I will say this isn't shocking to any of you as the plan has always been to kind of have Adira and him seated out at a distance, thinning the herd as they approach the fortress. So any creatures that make it to you all will be ones that they simply didn't catch. Um, the other reason being that if they were to fight at the fortress, there's a very solid chance that their own powers would destroy your own defenses with what they're going to be doing. So. Uh, Danica, you have that moment, and then the gates shut. And I would ask you all to turn to roll 20. Yep. As we shift over, we are to go here. Da -da -da -da. Uh, so, first off, before we get started, I'm going to just start playing my music now. Oh snap, this has music? Uh, yes, I'm, oh, using, right. I'm using Sirenscape. Um, so, that said, I'm going to need each of you to make an initiative check, so just rip a card off the top and tell me what you get. Queen of Hearts. An eight of diamonds. Okay. Uh, I got queen of uh, clubs. Remind me, do we redraw if they're the same? Um, I'm gonna say uh, you'll just get to choose whichever of you goes first. Um, if you have certain plans and things. And uh, good rule. What do you have for your initiative check? Oh. Today's draw reveals a jack of diamonds. Oh, dang. All right. Oh, shiny. Damn, you all pulled really well. All right. <laughs> so, uh, some things it's about... A, it's the sunflower nail. 
Fair but enough. also, like, your card is very shiny, and I love it. Give me. So, uh, that said, um, you all can see on uh, roll 20 that you should have access to your tokens, first off. Um, I've placed them all sort of just central on the map uh, because it was easier for me. And I'm going to point out a few things. So this blue square in somewhat of the bottom left is what I'm using to mark the portal. So that's what you're <laughs> keeping creatures away from. You have each of these seven ballistae will just fire at the end of each round at their nearest target. They can hit anything on the map. They just have that range. Now, there are also two gates here, which are the things that uh, they're trying to break down to get in. And some of these creatures are capable of flight. So any any of the blue ghosty boys you see can fly and they can move very fast. Um, so as this horde kind of appears out of the woods, um, you'll, you all also have the option of putting yourselves on the wall or in front of the gate or wherever you would want to be beforehand, by the way. Uh, while I'm giving this narration, feel free to place yourselves as you see fit. Um, so, that said, um, you all are standing in your various places along this wall of the dream side of Thornwood Bastion. Um, the dream side is a smaller fortress than uh, the full Thornwood in the physical realm, but is a fairly close mirror. It's almost like um, an outpost keep in a way, as the exit portal on this side is a bit smaller and a bit more like a normal gateway rather than a huge pond. And you see coming from the shadows beneath the trees in the infinite forest dream realm. First off are a number of creatures that look like if the shadows of birds and bats and all manner of flying things had teeth. The other things you see coming forth, these here are these wispy kind of, they look almost like mirrors of Navanayads, but they're made of these darker inky black vines and tendrils. And then last but not least, you see shoving trees aside out of their way two hulking brutes that look like the equivalent of a D&D earth elemental effectively. But if they were formed of stone being held together by this sticky, inky black substance, you know, these nightmares to be made of. With that said, uh, I see you're not on roll 20, so do you want me to control your token for you? Um, I, well, I mean, that, or if someone just wants to, like, do me a little, like, a sneak here. Do you need the roll 20 link? I do. Oh, wait, ah, do I? That is Hold my on. mistake, then. My bad. Wait, Hold on, I'm I- can be here. Okay. I, wait, no, I'm here. Okay, because okay, I remember go. we were all on it for the Urdrax, but we can easily lose links. Yeah, that was um, that was my right. bad. So I should be... Wait, where is this? Um, that's sort of uh, a central tower with two gates. So that's a gate and that's a gate. Those are the gates you're defending. So you can be okay. on top of the tower. Uh, you could be inside it between the two gates if you wanted. That's up to you. Um, I would be at I would be at whatever the highest vantage point is. Where is that? Uh, that would be probably about down here because this is a much taller tower okay, between those two then ballista. I, then I am here. All right. Now, uh, before we continue, I do also want to say at any point, if any of you want to take an action to use one of those ballista, you can. You just have to be in its square to do so. So you you have that option if you ever are too far away from the action and still want to do things. Okay. So, uh, that said, Alyssa and Danica are up first. You, you see these creatures first, just start to approach out of the woods. Uh, Let's do alphabetical order. D and E. Okay. So D before E. Then I would like, let's see. Pyromancy's got reach. 
I know, I'm like, but these are woods. It's the dream woods. It'll survive. Okay. Yeah, this then... isn't a dream realm, by the way. So any dream realm shenanigans apply. I would like to attempt to create a wall of fire where the big hulking fuckers are. <laughs> okay. Um, in that case, uh, do you want it on their square or do you want it on the square in front of them? On the square in front of them. Okay, so right here in that case, I'm going to go here and just do that and do that. And we're going to whoop. I'm just going to put that there. So if they have to travel through that square, they will, they shall burn. Um, all right. So that's uh, one of your actions. You have two left for the turn. Do you want to do anything else? Let me move here. And because the ballistas will automatically go off at the end, right? Yeah, yeah. they're going to automatically go at the end of the turn. I would like to light all the ones that I can see. I would like to light the tips on fire. Okay. So the ones you can see... Um, I'm going to say this area is kind of a lower wall up here, so you wouldn't be able to necessarily see those ones from the top of this tower. So I'll say you can hit these bottom three if you'd okay. like. Um, yeah. Oh. Spend one potential to do it just because it is a multi-target thing. You don't mind? Yep. Got it. So uh, all of those tips are on fire. I'll say all of the damage is uh, <laughs> switched to fire damage. Um, and it may have extra effects depending on how things go, because I just remembered that they're throwing sap and amber, uh, which <laughs> I would assume both sticks and burns. Sticky. Yep. Sticky. Now it's hot tar. Now it's like hot tar. Yeah, exactly. Um, so in that instance, uh, Annika, that's your turn. Alyssa, you're up. So... I see, so there's definitely the flyers. Um, I'm going to do a thing. Alyssa's going to do a thing that she's only really heard of um, in theory, but never put it to practice. Okay. And you know the shenanigans I'm about to get up to, which is I'm going to use this vantage point to vault off and using Dreamer's Epitaph, not as a bow, but the spear version, or more so the glaive, mm -hmm. we're, we're insect glaiving this like Guild War, like Mo Monster Hunter World is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, of course. Um, so pick your landing point. You have two within range. You can do this one here, or you can do this one here for movement. I thought, but there are no monsters in that one. Uh, no, there aren't. Uh, I'm treating this as a movement action because okay. you're, you're vaulting off and you're going to get your distance. No. There. You're here. Sure. I guess or we'll actually, or up here, because you also, you're in that square, so. Take I mean, pick. sure, I'll pick this square. Okay, so, Alyssa, you vault off the top of the tower, you land there. Um, in spear mode, I think it would make sense for your weapon to have reach. Uh, so. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going for, was the slice down on the descent. Yeah, you can absolutely do that as uh, you have two actions left. So if you would like to hit, uh, you have right. four targets in a range. So Alyssa, a question, right? Because, you know, like I'm all the way up here on this really tall tower. Are you You're going like, to see. Tr are you trying to like Detroit smash from like a height or distance or something like that? Is that what we're doing here? So the thing is, the the thing is that um, for those of you who do not know who, who don't play Monster Hunter World, I guess I'm gonna have to explain this mechanic that I'm trying to pull off. It's it's a vault mechanic where you use your spear to vault yourself into the air, and then it's another sort of mechanic where on the downwind you actually hit like this button for a whirlwind attack. So you're actually literally a you're swirling yourself with the spear using the heft of the well, sphere on the descent to chop into the monster. Well, the reason why, you know why I'm asking you. Yeah. 
Yes, I would appreciate some help. I will, that's like the first point I did that probably would have been just a shout out to Rue at the top prior to all this. Because okay. since it, this is the dream realm, I can't rely on a god. That's fair. Pretty also, I, I believe a god would probably also be manning a ballista, potentially. Yes, Up to you. because I thought we were going to be doing the physical realm and not the dream realm. Help. But the dream, Depends the dream realm, the dream realm is cooler for reasons. For uh, reasons. Yeah. For reasons. So we okay. also kind of save the physical one. Yeah, there's that too. Uh, so Rue, how would you like to assist Alyssa in this? What I want to do is when Alyssa comes in to like do a whirlwind attack, right? I want to. Uh, I want to add extra force to that turn. So like Okay. Let's 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 amplify the whirlwindness of this whole thing just a wee bit. So I will say, uh What's your what's your aromancy range? It's equal to your skill level. Aromancy um ooh, um let me let me look at what my aromancy is. Chop, where did I put this? I think it's either a three or a four, but I can't remember exactly. Um, hmm. I believe it would be a... Actually, what did I note on the sheet? Let me ask that question. It's a three. Okay, so I'm going to need you to spend one potential just to extend the range of this to work. Go um, for it. Because I'm four. I landed yeah. four away instead of three. But that said, both of you make skill checks. Uh, Alyssa, for whatever attack you would like to use, and uh, Rue for your aromancy skill. The way this I'm probably going to be using... I'm going to be using precision. Yep, makes sense. Um, for the purposes of this, um, when you're making a skill check, Normally, you would have drawn three cards. Um, oh. Alyssa, since it's well, since it's Alyssa's turn. But you only turn, have to draw one now, right? Yeah, you're just making the check uh, off the top of the deck. And for Alyssa's purpose, you would have drawn three cards at the start of your turn. Now, depending on the cards you draw, if you have a high enough one and you just want to take that as your result, you can and just ignore the skill check. Um, but if you want the chance of pulling something higher, you can make the check instead i'm gonna make the i'm gonna make the check good call oh, wait no terrible terrible hand wait. now i don't know what uh, to do with my three cards i don't know what to do with those so i'm just gonna pull them down that's fine uh now the other notice is when you two make your skill checks together like this let me know if either of you pull a king because we're, we're trying new co-op shenanigans so i'm supposed to draw my two for precision then Yes. Make your skill check as normal. Seven. Code okay, so that's a mixed success. Sin, uh, you had your jack as your success. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to take the highest result between the two of you for this co-op attack. So, that mixed success, Alyssa, you can feel yourself kind of falling short for a hot second, and you know you might just clip one of the creatures on your way down and then you feel this gust of wind up your rotation and you take an extra space and wind up nailing the hit. So, um, Alyssa, put yourself where you want to be in terms of whichever one of these four creatures that are in range of you. Tyler, there's some birds in the woods. <laughs> there's some birds in the woods? No, Valdian tactics, because why else? So, uh, you, because we're taking uh, Sin's success on this, this is a full success. There's no reaction. This creature just dies. You strike it, and there's this moment of resistance where it's like you're hitting, um, feels almost like you're hitting into gelatin or cloth for a moment, and then the creature shrieks and bursts into shadows. Um, and I believe you have one action left. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna really do much. I'm gonna just, I suppose, use the action to um, change epitaph from spear to 
bow and just hold ground there. Sounds good. Um, all right. Next up are all of the little flyy boys. So. So what do I do? Question. What do I do with the hand that the three that I drew that um, I didn't use? Oh, so when you're doing those, uh, those are to partially track your actions. So for every action you take, discard one of your choice. If you make a skill check, you just include one of those cards in the skill check to show that you're using it. I'll remember that for next time because I didn't do that this time around because we've never done the hand hand before with combat. We did it once for the Eurodrex, but like it's once. I don't remember. It's been a while since the Eurodrex fight. That's why <laughs> we've had like eight episodes. It's fine. Um, so yeah, that's all that. Um, these fly boys are going to, this one's going to actually come over here and attack this ballista. Um, this one is actually just going to make a beeline for the portal. And you all notice these flyers can move two squares on a movement. So they are fast, but it also doesn't look like they take much to, one, two. Danica, there's one that's going like right over your shoulder. And same with Rue here. And then this one is actually going to go one, two on the diagonal there. Sorry, I got to scooch this boy over. So those are their turns. Um, Danica, you're going to take an attack from the one that's in your square as it just shrieks and tries to talon you. Uh, it pulls a four. That's a full failure. Uh, <laughs> Danica, you have the option to move and take an action. What would you like to do? Yes, I would like to draw my sword and take a swipe at it. Okay. Uh, the other thing, the other nice thing about this is because it failed its skill check. As its consequence, you don't have to make a skill check to hit it. It just oh takes God. the damage. Sweet. So, this thing, uh, you pull your sword and there's a flash of light off the blade as you draw it. And off in the distance, almost in echo, you see a swath of flame erupt somewhere in the infinite forest in the distance where Halcyon would be. And in an almost interesting uh, parallel to that, your upward strike just cleaves this thing in half. So this boy is gone. Uh, Rue, there's one that's going to take a swipe at you as well, because you're in range. Okay. It pulled a 10, so it actually gets a full success. Um, so you are going to take, uh, one damage, if you please. So assign that to one of your skills as you see fit. And okay. It, uh, so does that mean, does the skill drop a level or how does that work? Yeah, uh, you, yeah. um... It's a it's, negative one penalty. Yeah. Or a minus one card penalty. Okay. So if you were putting it in, like, say, uh, say I got the negative one and I'm putting it in myself. My stealth is a skill level of one. With that, there's a column called column, column called DMG, which is damage. That's where you put your input for the negative one. Yep. So basically, I don't draw any cards if I make a stealth check. Okay. Exactly. Um, and of course, for any of you with healing skills, when you heal things, it will remove that damage from your skills as you choose. Um, so that's that. Uh, Rue, you're up next. This thing just took a swipe at you, and there's a few more nearby. So I'm not sure what I should do um, because it's there's there's a lot going on here. But mm -hmm. like, wait, you know, question. I, like the supreme overlord of this domain, yes. Question. Yeah. Sorry, yes. I don't mean to be annoying and rule rules lawyery, but pro, did you forget the Belliste? No, it's end of the round. We're, we're only on we're only on the jacks in initiative. It's not the end of the round yet. Y'all oh y'all pulled Sorry. high. So, um, I would like to use. Um, okay, so there are six targets here. Here's what I want to ask: Can I just strike every one of these flying creatures with lightning? <laughs> Uh, spend one potential, yeah. It's a multi-target thing, so. Okay. Um, do you want to just hit the three that are within close range of you, uh, or do you want to hit all six of them? 
Ooh, okay. Well, you know, like we like to do the cool cinematic stuff around here, right? So probably all six of them. Okay, I'm gonna have you spend two potential for that then. Okay, that's fair. Just because it's kind of two groups, so. Um, all right, how how does it look? Uh, well, first, go ahead and make your skill check for me. Okay, um, we got three of these. So, you want the highest of the three? Yes. Okay. You get this. Oh, dear Lord. All right. Uh, on a full success, these things aren't going to get a chance to fire back. So, all of these are going to go. Tell us how you would like to wipe these six creatures off the bat with effectively a chain lightning spell. Okay, so basically it's one of those, you know, like the creature takes a swipe at me and it succeeds and it's kind of like, oh, oh, okay, this is a serious thing. And, you know, everybody's just kind of like casually chilling out in dreamland and there is this column of swirling clouds that gathers right over our heads. Mm -hmm. and, a, and like a peal of thunder before lightning descends from this column of cloud and strikes all of these creatures. All right, now I'm gonna move one of these just back here so that I can copy and paste it easier, but it is currently not a target. So all six of them just are struck by lightning and there's this interesting moment where normally a thing that's struck by lightning would smolder and burn a little bit and fall over these are struck by lightning and it's like they're popped like balloons they just dissipate into non-existence uh rue i'm gonna say you have one action left because you took the assist action as well uh for the okay. Alyssa thing so what else this would was, you like to do this was this was minus two potential right yes Okay. I'm actually trying to keep track of it this time. Um, right. So what would I like to do with my action? Yeah, you've got one thing left you can do. What do you want to do with it? Okay. Um, I'm actually going to shift this boy layers. So you don't have to see him as a target. Can I see these things? Yes, you can. You're high enough to see how them. Far are, how far off are they? Uh, they are... Depending on what square you're in, they are either one, two, three away. Yeah, the two biggest boys are three away, and then the rest are four or more. Okay. Um, oh, well, I mean, there's a ballista right here. Can I use it? Absolutely. Uh, and which... it's on fire. It is also on fire. Which one do you want to target? Um, this one. Okay. Uh, skill of your choice. Skill of my choice. Okay. I, I, I'm imagining y'all have ways to apply your skills to these ballista in order to aim and fire them properly. I am going to use um, Claromancy for this. So that one has. Um, skill draw of two my highest of those two is a nine of diamonds okay so that is a mixed success which means you fire off this ballista bolt and this creature is going to take a hit um i'm just going to use a little red dot to show that he's been hit um and it spears this thing in the shoulder and this is one of those sort of earth elemental-esque looking creatures um so the bolt strikes between two of the chunks of earth and starts to burn away at this sort of inky darkness that's holding it on and so the plate actually starts to fall off the creature and in that moment the creature looks up to where it was fired from heals the plate off itself and throws it at you as its retaliation so you are going to take uh two damage as this large chunk of stone slams into you from a distance hmm i don't think we get reactions for this kind of thing uh if you had an action left you could but unfortunately i do not can it mm, no i don't know if that's something that you can do feel free to ask Okay. 
Can you burn potential for actions? Uh, normally, potential is part of an action, so it's not something you can spend to get an extra one. Okay. Um, but yeah. I believe that's the last of your turn, so now it's the Fearmonger's turns. So this boy is going to go... For the, two, for the two damage that you have, when you pick the two skills that you get, do you have to put use both of those points in the same one, or can you... You can spread it, it out ones? between more skills. Like, if you want to take away two skills that still have one point of damage each, and you just want to take one out of those two, you know, like take the one out of one and take the one out of the other, that's still the two damage that you get. It doesn't have to be all to one particular skill. You can... Yeah. Okay. So this boy is actually going to go uh, take two actions to move here, and then he's going to take one strike at the gate. Uh, each of these gates have 20 hit points um, because those, those hits are a lot chunkier than in other systems. Um, so this boy... This is one of the wispy, thin, kind of tree ant Navaniad looking ones, and it steps up and sticks its hands to the front of the gate, and then it attempts to start pushing its tendrils into the wood and split apart. Um, so this gate's just going to take... Uh, well, actually, I have to make a check for this. Badoop, badoop. Yeah, that's a full success, so this gate's going to take... Two damage. Yep. Go down to 18. Um, one of these boys is going to go to Alyssa. And then the other one is going to come down to and go three and go up next to this one. But won't be able to attack. So these two are at the gates. Uh, Alyssa, this one uh, moved one square into you. So it's going to take two attacks against you. And uh, I did not shuffle those. Brain forgetting to shuffle these cards. Yep, one, two. Uh, it gets a mixed success, so you're going to take two damage as it reaches out and swipes you with a claw, but you're also going to get a hit back on it. So what skill do you want to use to make that strike? Probably, uh, no, it's too close quarters for the bow. Uh, Nick Sergi. Ooh, nice. So uh, I kind of imagine you just, this creature is made of shadows and darkness and nightmare energy. So I kind of imagine you actually just like reach out and there's a moment where you feel you can flex its form a little bit and there's just these spiky thorns that suddenly grow out of it and spear through it for a quick second. Uh, what's your skill level for an extra G? Two. Two? Okay, so I'm just going to put a mark here showing that he's been hit. Um, so there's a little red dot there. And uh, yeah, it's looking hurt. So that was its first attack. It actually gets a second off on you. Yay. Uh, it also gets another mixed success. So uh, um, you're going to take two more damage here, but you're also going to get the retaliation. Do you want to do the same thing? Same skill? Yes. Okay. The second time, like it swipes at you twice and then it scratches you a little bit. And then you just burst this thing with Nixergy from the inside out. It falls to tatters as the shadows unravel from within itself. Um. Y'all are doing great. All right. Uh, so that's their turn. Barry, you're up. Oh, goody. Um, I see you are over at the portal. The uh, could you uh, give me those Aether crystals you have? I'll trade you for a band-aid. Will do. With my first action... I, I assume um, this conversation was pre-fight. No, this is in the fight. I'm using the, the flowers. Oh, gotcha. We have Don't calms. Don't the flowers. We have the calms. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I would like. Uh, oh, how do I do this? Um, to use my alchemy skill uh, for my first action to um, create a healing potion out of dream stuff. Fair enough. Uh, go ahead and make your skill check. Um, I will change how much healing it does based on how well you do. It's a jack of clubs. Jack of clubs, full success. We'll say that'll heal four points for anyone who takes it. All right. Um, then as my second action, I would like to assist Rumine by handing them, uh, uh, rather by using, uh, what's it called? The comms? The flower? Yeah, the... Yes, the flowers, but the, I was going the to say, he, is he, he eliminates. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he is eliminates to send the, the potion over to him. Is Rue Wait. within a two square range of you? Or, or for your skill? Uh, I am actually. Yeah? Yeah, because I'm, pr I'm pretty sure your limited skill's at two, right, Barry? Yeah, my limited skill is at two. Yeah, uh, so does, it just happens. Does that count as two? Uh, diagonals count, so you can go diagonal down and then write one. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Uh, Rue, there's a moment where your the flower on your lapel shudders, and then unfolding from its petals is an arm holding a healing potion. I take a potion out of the hand, and I put a crystal in the hand. Uh, fair enough. I'll allow it. Uh, so, Barry, you return with a crystal. Um, it is perhaps um, a chunk, kind of snow globe sized, I would say, um, but very rough and rough hume, and it, it hums with a little bit of that Borealis colored magic. Okay, um, in that case, I am now... Uh, ooh. Actually, I'll let you decide on how many I have to spend here. Um, but I am going to um, pull out that spare I made to throw at a certain somebody. The the the, um, the tuning fork Bonk. of violence. <laughs> the tuning fork of violence. Of violence. Um, and. This time, um, I would like to uh, strike that tuning fork against um, a, like, I just have a, a handful of seeds. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm basically, uh, what do you call it, um, smacking <laughs> the seeds with the tuning fork. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no skill check to be made for this. This is all object um, interactions with yourself, too, so yeah. I'm not going to say this takes your action the yet. I, the idea here is um, that I'm trying to ascertain, uh, or I'm trying to harmonize the seeds with each other so that I can fuse them into one mega okay. seed. Okay. Uh, who? All right. I don't know if you should make a skill check for this or not. Um, no, I'm going to say... Well, no, I'm thinking the harmonization the should just work, but if you want to fuse them this turn, I'll let that be your action instead. Yeah, yeah, that would. I would love for that to be my action. Okay, go ahead and make a skill check of your choice, depending on what magic you're trying to use for this. Um, that is... Uh, geomancy um, with a king. I'm oh, with a king. All right. So normally, if you were dealing damage, I would have you cascade like we're used to, and you deal an extra point of damage per card you get off that cascade. Since you're not dealing damage, what extra thing do you want to happen with this check? Is there um, an extra thing you want? Is a better question. For it to work, that's all. <laughs> okay, so we'll say um, 
there's going forward there's no chance of complication in using this mega seed pod that you've built um and it, it, it doesn't have a chance of failing on its end of things we'll say so uh in that case i believe that's your full turn so you all are out here fighting and then uh somewhere off in the distance you hear a thwack in the slight ring of a tooting fork and you have no idea what Barry is doing that's often a m mode a mood okay so next up is these boys this boy is gonna go straight for the gate um because he's a brute <laughs> Um, this one's already been shot, so I think he's going to hang back and actually try ranged attacks a little bit. Uh, this boy is going to take some fire damage, and I'm just going to mark him with a little sticker as he steps through, uh, the flame wall. Um, I'm also going to say that this boy, oh, did not mean to call that window up. This boy here, hmm, Rue, Rue hurt him. Medanica conjured fire. I think he's actually going to try and make a swipe at Danica because his attack hits a full zone, so it'll also hit the gate. So, you watch Danica as it reaches down and grabs a decently sized, like, chunk of earth and stone out of the, f the dream forest floor and just hurls it in your direction. So, this first attack is a jack, so that's a full success. You're going to take uh, two earth damage as it just slams into both you and the gate, actually. So this is going to go down to... My deck hates me, 16. says the DM. My deck, usually does, fashion. my deck usually does hate me. This is the first it's put me on par with y'all. I'm actually enjoying it for once. God damn it. Uh, this oh no, next... the DM enjoying the game too? Unacceptable. I think... <laughs> uh, actually, all three of you are in range, so it's not even going to move. Its last two attacks are going to be one at Alyssa and one at Rue. So, Alyssa, this first one is a full failure, so you have a chance if you would like to move and take an action. Yes, please. Um, Closer and precision again. Brute. All right. Uh, would you? You, like you have one your square. Yeah, you have your choice of squares. Any one of them will put you in range. Um. So yeah. Actually, actually, my range is two. I'm gonna move back a bit. Yeah. So I can shoot through the firewall. So I can add fire damage as well. Okay. Uh. So. This boy has already been shot once. Your arrow pierces into it and lights another portion of its body on fire. It is not looking good, but as your arrow strikes, it does launch one more boulder at Rue. And Rue, I'm sorry, that was a full success, so you're going to take two more damage. No! Also, this ballista is absolutely destroyed after taking those two hits. Which ballista? Uh, this oh, one to your right. The round? Okay. No, uh, we're hitting the end of the round just after this uh, okay. action. So now it's the end of the round, and one of those ballistas is gone. I need to mark hold on for a things. moment. This wasn't this was one of these creatures trying to wait. No, 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 no. You got a full success against you. Yeah, I, I thwacked you with a boulder, but the boulder hits everything in your zone, so it hit the oh, ballista okay. as well. Oh, okay. So it just like, how much damage do I take from that? I guess two, uh, two points for you. It does break one of the arms of the ballista though, so it's no longer able to be fired. I will say, since these are living ballista in a dream realm, I'll let y'all take actions to repair one on your turn, if you would like. At any point. Um, but that said, so this is. Done. And then that. Okay, I had to mark my progress bar for a second. So that all happens. End of the round. 
there are oop, oop, oop. I need to move this boy back here so there are going to be a number of creatures that spawn um I'm going to say uh There's going to be a couple more flyers that spawn. Uh, right there. And then I'm going to spawn one up here. Uh, these are just going to be the ones that make it past the hail of Ballista Fire. These ones. So I don't have to go through making a bunch of tokens and then deleting a bunch of tokens. Um, however, Beyond that, um, we're going to say each of these guys, because there's seven ballista here, or six ballista now. There's four, so we'll say um, this brute up here is probably just going to die from a ballista shot. So we'll, we will eliminate this boy, because he was on his last leg. And then each of these boys are going to get another bit of damage to them. And this boy is also going to get yellow dot to show that he's been damaged. Um, oh, and then I should also, there will be one more fear monger that spawns back here as they just start coming back out of the woods. Um, so that happens. The ballista take out a solid chunk of people and then damage the ones that were still remaining and then there's some new flyers that arrive and we will say it is at this point where you all hear a shrieking loud noise come from the woods and you see a number of the trees start to break and fall as a creature standing roughly between eight and nine feet tall wearing a black crystal armored carapace between the cracks and the edges of which bleeds this kind of purplish black flame light, wielding a long crystal blade with a tail whipping behind him, fully covered in a helm. It's a beast unlike anything you've ever seen. Left hand is also a sharpened black crystalline claw. And he appears here. But it's not his turn yet. It is instead Alyssa and Danica's turn. <laughs> oh, Danica, you're up. Okay. I would like to use the two potential to do the cool thing. All where right. I'm going to kind of step up on top of the gate. And the pummel of my sword is going to start glowing like a star. So it basically looks like the morning star. And the blade is also going to light up to the point where it almost looks like it's vibrating. All right, cool. As it as it stretches out into an even longer blade that like um, ghostly flames kind of sprout from. And I would like to take a note out of Alyssa's book, call for a, uh, hey Rue, can I have a hand? And I would like to jump into this square while spinning, creating a flaming vortex. Um, you can have a hand and a whole foot if you want to, as long as these creatures go somewhere. Okay, so um, that said, uh, are you trying to hit all of them? Yes. Okay, in that case, I'll ask you to spend one more potential if you have yeah. it, uh, just for the multi-target. And then both of you make your skill checks and tell me what you get. Do I only draw one? Uh, what skill are you using? I'm assuming aromancy is. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know what, um... Have you put it? damage to aromancy? Because usually you draw your three, and then you only tell the highest one. Yeah. And um, make sure you're using one of the cards from your hand, if you still have any, like, cards left over for it. My highest is a nine. Wait, wait, no, I have cards in my card bank still. I have a king in my card bank. If you spend one potential, you can swap it in. Yep. Okay, this is where fun happens. So in the background of things, I've made some changes to how critical hits work. 
uh, specifically with regards to co-op attacks like this. So Sin, because there's just an automatic king on the field, you don't have to worry about this skill check. Oh. Except for, I need both of you to draw cards off the top of your decks until you don't pull a face card. So you just, you keep going until keep you pulling. don't get a face card. Keep pulling till you don't get a face. This until isn't a face you get card, a face. it's yeah. a 10. Yeah. So keep going. No, until we, you get a face. Oh, okay, I was about to say, what do you- okay, Sorry, got a face. I- Okay, got until a Until you get a face. Yeah. Okay, so you pull, how many cards did you pull off that, both of you? Two. Two. Until you get a face card, I'm until still you pulling. Get a face. Danica is still cascading. Yep. There we go. How, how so many did you pull? Ten. So ten two. That's twelve plus whatever damage you would normally do for your attack, Danica. Do because to, does it matter what face card we pulled? No, the face card is just the cue to stop pulling. Okay. Um. So, in this instance, because it's a co-op attack and because there is a critical hit, I've decided to get ridiculous and say that both of you crit and add your damage together. Okay. On a co-op attack. So, Danica, you get one of two options. I use Aromancy to fan the flame, or I use Aromancy to add, in addition to your fire damage, lightning damage. I add the lightning damage. Lightning! Okay, so basically this whole thing looks like a volcano just erupted. Yeah. And a tornado it's, left. it's dirty lightning. As some people don't know, that's when lightning happens inside a volcanic eruption. Yeah, there is this. I'm a, I'm a volcanic. There is a swirling vortex that rises up to meet the falling Danica, as all of this dirt and debris is picked up from the uh, floor of the infinite forest, and then lightning starts arcing between bits of stone and earth and dirt. And Danica, you're basically like Dark Souls plunge attacking this, and a bolt of lightning strikes your sword. It strikes the hilt and then arcs down through the blade to the ground, finding these creatures on the way. And then you follow up with a starlit blade. It's a it's a wild time. <laughs> so that was so much damage that these three are dying. Uh, there's no way like absolutely no way they can survive a 12 hit combo. <laughs> Uh, so that happens. Is there anything else you'd like to do? <laughs> Your turn's not over yet. Yeah, let's see. Hmm. Do -do. I would like to step into this square, and as I'm stepping, force the fire back into the fearmonger behind me, in front of it. Okay, uh, hold on, please, while I um, just delete that flame. So, uh, just make your me while I delete these creatures. <laughs> make your skill check and make an attack. All right. It is a six. Wait. No, that'd be an eight. An eight. All right. Yeah. So, mixed success, which means he's going to burn a little bit. He's been hit. And then he's going to get a strike back on you. So you watch as, in a weird way, there's this dark glow that starts in its chest, goes up its throat, and its throat sort of expands like a frog's for a moment, and then it spits a bolt of darkness at you out of its mouth. Um, You are going to take... Ba -da -ba -da. one damage from that okay took me a second to find it on my sheet uh yeah and oh and it sort of hits you in the face and it sticks like ink so for the next turn you're going to be disoriented which means you won't be able to target things outside your square you mm -hmm. can still move you can still take actions as normal but your targeting is limited okay. um that's that i believe that's your full turn or do you have an action left um, no, I think that was it because I moved and then used pushed the flame back. So I think that's my actions. Cool. Uh, Alyssa, you're up. Hi. Okay. I guess in 
the vein of spending potential already. Um, I am going to spend, for my first action, I'd like to spend, I guess, three potential. Okay. Because, well, this is going to get a little fucky, but I'll that nightmare monster needs to not. <laughs> okay, so... What I'm trying to say is Alyssa's going to not only tap into the one potential spend of the stick arrow, like, you know, the freeze arrow aspect of Dreamer's Epitaph, mm-hmm. but she's using the other two as both separate calls to Threnody and Psycharine to keep this spirit in lockdown. Okay, so it already won't be able to move on its next turn, so... Like, she's preventing it from moving for at least three turns. Oh, you want to extend the duration of it. Okay. Yeah, essentially, that's where the... But that's how, like, thematically, that's how it's playing out. Because yeah, I'm not I... expecting Threnody and Psycharine to be able to step into the Dream Realm. That's this isn't. It's not the time of the year for their influence to reach any further than extending. Yep. No, I just needed the clarity on what was going yeah. on. Uh, so I'm going to give him a blue dot, and I noted down that he has three turns to go on that. So how does this look in your head? You know, we have this call go out to Threnody and Psycharine, but you are still firing this arrow. Personally, I think, actually, no, it's not Threnody and Psycharine. It's Threnody and Coronir. Because Dreamer's Epitaph is a mix of dream and death. So I think, really, it's going to be um, these two separate pieces of Dreamer's Epitaph just kind of snake along the string. She fires the first arrow. They're mixed. Fires the second arrow because this is essentially three arrows to keep it in place, so one arrow mm-hmm. will blink out. Yep. If that makes sense. Yeah. Th- that'll be your the... visual cue for it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She fires the second arrow. That one's completely covered in death. All Third, right. the dream. So Complete dream. You'll notice the first one hits and splashes across sort of like the upper torso and then leads down into this sticky, like, inky tar substance and locks its legs in place. And then the second arrow that uh, uses death magic punches through one part of the crystal and pins its left foot. And then the third arrow pins its right foot. It is still um, there, and now it's angry. And you see through this kind of almost, it looks like a facsimile of a visored knight's helm but chiseled out of rough black crystal, you see these two purplish eyes just flare and it roars at you. It can't do anything in return. No, it can't. Um, Okay, so... uh, That's one... I think that would equate to one skill. Yeah. Because I used the three potential for the two extra arrows. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stay where I am. Okay. And in efforts of adding insult to injury, I suppose... Actually, you know what? My hand is shite. My hand is complete shit. Uh, You can always make skill checks to try for better. uh, We're gonna do, I guess, another one. A A skill check of spiritualism, I guess, on the... I don't know. Did Barry tell us about this prior to, or was this just straight to the Silk Mother? No, Barry has not told you anything about um, the monster. Like, is it uh, he, the makeup of the monster? That, like, he, yeah, he told you the makeup of the monster, but like nothing about who made the monster. Okay. <laughs> I love the look, <laughs> Nids. Okay. No, I just wanted to be sure if he specifically did tell us, like, hey, no, this has a nightmare spirit in it, or else was that just straight for Halcyon, Adira, and Silk Mom? No, yeah, he he told, he would have told everyone. Yeah, no, she's gonna, I'm going to use a spiritualism check, because this is gonna get a little wonky, because it's a nightmare spirit, 
but it still it was dead. It did die, essentially. The uh, giant that it was. It was. It had its spirit removed. Eh, same so, same thing. It's that weird gray area that yeah. nobody's really fucked with before, except for Elizabeth today. Yeah. So I'm going to make a spiritualism check to see if I can. Um, I'm going to make a spiritualism check to see if I can get in contact with whoever's inside there. If there is anything inside there. Okay. God, the way these cards are fucking me over. Six, six of diamonds. Mixed success. So... I'll say you reach out with a spiritualism check. And this is kind of an investigative check, so it won't necessarily deal damage. Nope. Um, you get back, like, when you open your spiritual senses and glance at this creature, you see almost as if, like, almost in a mirror to Halcyon in an interesting way with the cape flowing from the pauldrons, you see this black and purple flame curling up and under from the edges of the shoulders and up and around it in this dark aura, and you can see an extra set of darkened eyes in that aura. And that is what's screaming and roaring, and that is the primary power here. But you can also mm -hmm. see that the more it rages, the more it gets angry, the more the crystal grows and eats it a little bit. And then in the middle of all of that, you see deep within its chest, there's this well of black where the crystal starts like almost a vanta black circle mm -hmm. but within that is a little pinpoint of light you have no idea what that pinpoint is i will say though because it was a mixed success he's gonna get a shot off at you so you're gonna see its head like from the arrows it's angry and then once you start investigating it and prodding it almost with your magic it notices you, locks eyes with you, and the tail whips around over its shoulder, and you watch a thin line of that dark flame burst out of the point of its tail at you. So you're going to take uh, two damage from this. Mm-hmm. As it uses its Nightmares Rondo. Yep. So you you all watch as like this little laser beam of darkness basically carves across the landscape and carves up and across Alyssa's chest. Uh, Alyssa's not looking so good. Would that be? I have, I have all but one of my level ones X'd out by now. I'm getting down to chipping away at my level twos. Um, so I'm probably going to be close. Retiring Alyssa. Reminder that you can use spiritualism to heal. I know, but and you're saying. So with that, Alyssa, that was your full turn. It is now the yeah, minions. Yeah, that was my full turn. Uh, the minions are just going to make a run for the portal. Make a run for mm -hmm. the portal. Yep, where Barry is. Okay. Whip. Okay. Whip. Whip. Uh, this fearmonger here is going to come in against you, Danica, mm -hmm. and take a swing. I hope it fails. It utterly fails. Uh, it pulled a two as its highest. It pulled two twos, actually. Um, so, Danica, uh, you get the opportunity to move and take an action if you would like. Yes, as it like goes to swipe at you and you just miss. Or it misses. I would like to swing at it. Okay. Uh, in that case, pick your skill and you'll just deal damage. All right. I will use my pyromancy. And that would be a two, right? Two, yep. Yeah, that's enough. So you just... It's almost like you block part of its claws with the blade, and then with your other hand, you draw some of the flame off the blade itself, and then grab this thing's face and kind of like shove the flame through it in a way. Um, you also do have the option to move as let's, this reaction. Let's see where. Oh. 
I think I will get closer to Alyssa here. Okay. Uh, and now it is Barry's turn. Um, Barry would like to spend two potential to do the cool thing. Okay. Uh, right. just describe this cool thing as you do it. Um, the cool thing is that Barry sort of gives the, the, the general command to attack and then all of the ballistae, um, turn and fire. Okay. Uh, in that instance, uh, what do you want them to fire at? Do you want them to focus on the minions? Uh, yes, the minions. We're trying to keep them away from me and the portal. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six bullets die. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, they're just, all of these minions are going to die. <laughs> As this great cry goes up and you hear like this random smattering of spiritual ghost voices here. <laughs> <laughs> and like it is the most random thing because some of them are like elderly like men and women some of them are in their prime there's at least one kid taking pot shots like it's the biggest slingshot they've ever seen so uh that happens you have two actions left what do you do um with those two actions i would like to try uh to begin the process of merging this mega seed pod with um, with the Aether Crystal. Um, and what I would like to do is, as if I were, uh, what I would like to do is I would like to use um, my Geomancy ability uh, in conjunction with like my Tuning Fork to harmonize the seed with the crystal. Okay. So go ahead and make your skill check. Um, I'm gonna say you've already built this tuning fork once, so I'll I'll say add a card for the tuning fork. Since you've already built this as a tool previously and have used it in a similar manner. Great, um, so that's another king. Oh my god. <laughs> so I'm going to say first off, holy shit. Second off, um I've already got two left. <laughs> I mean you so, can still you can reshuffle your uh discard pile when you get out of cards, you know, right? Yep. So I'm not there yet. Barry. Again, this is a critical moment, not just because it's a critical hit. Um, so, you're not only succeeding on fusing these two things, we're going to say that this is going to succeed in creating the first living beacon. Yes! You are... Th there is a moment here where you slam the tuning fork like effectively what you do is you place both the seeds and the crystal on the ground and you slam the tuning fork down pardon me need a bit of water here you slam this tuning fork staff down gandalf style on top of them all of you here and it sounds like a loud bell tone going off. There is a stillness and a silence that happens in this fight right now. As this ripple of magic goes out, there's no other nightmare beast except for the night that you see here. Alyssa, you have your spiritual sight up and you can see as this ripple goes out, that flaming aura flickers for a moment as whatever Barry just did hits this thing. You mm -hmm. watch Alyssa, Danica, and Rue because you're high enough to see this as some of the crystal goes from a deep, deep black to a dullish, you know, it's kind of like 
chipped obsidian where the edges are a dull gray. It loses its luster. Some of its crystal starts to fall off of this creature. And the helmet, where this kind of makeshift visor would be, breaks, falls, and disintegrates. Creature is still going, but now you can see who is underneath it all as this beacon alights. And you see Vinat, who doesn't quite seem themselves. I'll put it that way. Not the least of which because they're standing, you know, between eight and nine feet tall and covered in black crystal, you know. Um, but you can see that their eyes are completely almost weeping this black or like substance and burning with that purplish black flame. Barry, you have one action left. What would you like to do with it? I would like to eliminate my way over to him. Okay. So this is a moment where we're hitting a bit of a story critical moment and I'm going to because of time, I'm going to say that whatever you all do next is going to end this fight. You've established a beacon that is taking care of one third of this fused creature right now. It's not going to last much longer here. It is growing unstable, we'll say. So in this instance, Barry, how much potential do you have left? Um, I've used one already and then two, I have six. Do you want to spend the remaining to finish this fight? Yes. Okay. Hmm. Um, and what I would like to do is I would like to eliminate my way towards him. Um, and, uh, what do you call it? With the seed in hand, I'm going to press it into the spot on his chest where I can see that small point of light. Okay. Um, and then Rue will hear my voice from his lapel. Um, and I will say, you should probably take us to a safe place. This could happen. This, this could be very terrible. And with that, Alyssa and Danica, you see, in fact, very, your limitance magic pulls you out of Danica's flower. Yeah. And you, <laughs> there is a moment where you actually, like, you sort of took a run up to this and your momentum continues. So you launch out of this lapel flower like the worst uh, prank flower squirt gun <laughs> in existence <laughs> with velocity and you have the crystal in hand and there's this moment where you all sort of freeze you two, Danica and Alyssa, see Barry coming out and slam what looks like it looks like a closed up bud of a very large flower but where the petals and the bud would actually be is layer upon layer of this clear uh, crystal with the Borealis light going through it. And it slams into this thing's chest where the black crystal was already weakened and you hear a crunch. Rue, that statement comes over the flower and the whole world stops for a split second for you. You feel two feelings. First is that this moment is claromantic and you are seeing your usual few moments into the future. So when the time comes, you'll be prepared for this. There is a second moment where you have a feeling of deja vu wash over you. 
And this deja vu is the same sense that hit you when you were building the eminent domain with Adira. The sense that fighting in the dream realm, building an eminent domain, these are all things you've done before and you're just escaping your memory currently. And then there is a third moment in the midst of all this, this vision, this prediction, this feeling, where you hear a soft voice in your ear make a quiet request. Will you let me say that? Well, if you didn't ask me, I was going to ask you. But first, I am, a, you know, even though I am far more powerful here than I normally am, I am but a mortal, and I need a beverage. So I take the potion that he <laughs> <laughs> gave me. Indeed, indeed. And then I say, I um, Roy loves. I am, <laughs> I am an unusual sort, as you already know. So, um, here's what I propose. I I would like to use my um, soul forging capabilities to give, like, to um, for Aurora to use my very person as a vessel to do whatever it is that they want. Interesting. Okay. Um, so, Rue, you sort of bear yourself open to this fractured divinity you've encountered. And you lay bare your very spirit to them. And there is this feeling not of losing agency or losing control of yourself, but simply of being able to sit back and relax as someone else takes the wheel for a moment. You know if there was a moment where at any point you felt the need, you could rest back control instantly. You blink, and you are suddenly two minutes into the future. Having opened yourself to Aurora, Aurora has been adjusting to your abilities and almost almost piloting you through part of this fight. Getting used to you, getting used to how this works. And so, Barry, you slam this crystal into the creature's chest and you say, Rue, I think you need to get us somewhere safe. And then out of nowhere, Rue is beside you. There is a burst of wind and a slight scent of chamomile and you all see Rue looks. If I'm if I might with a description, um, so like normally where you would see Rue in all of his normal colors, most of them being like greens and teals and chamomile flowers and all of these other things, my hair has changed color. It is a bit longer. It is standing on end and you see like the colors of the Aurora running through it. If you were looking at his eyes, you would see that same pattern in place of his pupils. Oh, she's very decent. <laughs> like there is, there is like my Hari is like flying in the wind, but from what you're able to tell, there is no wind. Like, I am just here and existing. If you didn't know any better, I could like literally be walking on water at this very moment. Who is Yuna? We don't know her, but we know <laughs> this person right here. We do. I will also say to the rest of you, there is this beautiful moment where Rue just appears. And you see that the chamomile flowers on the Howry have actually lifted off of the fabric and have become embodied in this Borealis light and are floating around Rue. And then there is a point where that crystal impacts the chest and space shifts around all of you. Rue. 
Describe for the players in the audience what it looks like when your sword drags a spirit from someone's body as everyone nearby is dragged into this space with you. Like, I feel like it wouldn't even be like a thing that people would feel themselves even being dragged or pulled or even moved into. Like whatever Aurora does, the moment it happens, what you see is like the buildings, the ballista, the uh, like the trees and everything else completely evade from view. There is nothing but water and the horizon as far as you can see. The whole sky has these, it's the Aurora, but it looks like the shrieks of the Aurora are alive. They're moving around in the air like will of the wisps, except that they're in the sky and not on the ground. The ground beneath you looks more like water than ground, but it's solid and firm. It makes ripples where you step on it, the ripples, make lights everywhere, because all of this is Aurora's doing. Normally, there would be a lot of fog here, there would be trees here, there would be bits of land here and there. There is none of that here. It is serene, in a way. Except for, as you were all pulled into this space, or I guess more accurately, this, this space ripples out from the point of contact between the crystal and the creature. Mm-hmm. You see where the creature was instead of this almost nightly appearance with a knot encrusted in black. You now see a treant like figure, tall, 10, 15 feet, its form almost rippling and changing heights. You see the base of that tree trunk where normally the treant's legs would be. are crystal and rooted firmly, almost like this tree grew out of a spire of stone. And in the middle of it all, wrapped in roots and bark and stone, you see the knot is sort of suspended in this being. The knot is being used as the bridge between these two forces in a way. Both of them are pulling at the knot and you can see parts of his spirit get absorbed into the nightmare giant and then regenerate and parts get absorbed into the crystal and then regenerate. This seems like a very painful position to be in. Renat's eyes flicker open and look at you, Rue, and sort of look past you. Aurora. And you can tell the knot's in a lot of pain. There's disbelief here. It's... I just, just can't be. I... I haven't dreamed since before. And he tries to struggle and is locked in place. I will say the rest of you are in this space as well. If there's ever a point where you would like to do something, please speak up. But for now, you can see the crystal portion of this is weakening where that crystal struck. There is now a light not burning or eating away at it, but simply like a steady candle flame keeping darkness away. Um, Storyteller, mm -hmm. I would like to spend the rest of my potential with my spiritualism to aid in pulling the knot spirit from bridging these two forces. Okay. 
Um, hey, Aurora. Just to remind you, because, you know, I think I spent a little bit more time piloting this body of mine than you have. There are two things I think that will be helpful for you, which is my abilities allow you to take the energy of your soul and give them form. So, I know that crystals have been your thing for a long time, but for me, it's been, well, started with the sword and now it's this whole space that we're in. So, you could do anything. I also, in one of these spaces, use Claromancy to turn back time one. I don't know how that will go for you. You're welcome to try. There is no verbal note of recognition here, but you do get a sense of strict understanding as I almost fall out of my chair. Um, <laughs> and you... You feel your powers being moved. And there is this moment where the image of this iridescent female figure transposes itself out of Rue to float sort of in the space between you and where Vinat hangs. She is not fully embodied here. Like, if we were to think of a ghost, that, this is that traditional image. Um, and it is a form of a lady with long flowing hair would normally, if she were standing instead of floating, stand about five eight five nine wisp thin with a wide wide sun hat on very cottage core um and Long castle give us give us starlight yeah, a bit, hair a bit well in this case everything is aurora as you can see two tendrils of the borealis in the sky come down and are shaped into this figure and you can see Alyssa you're preparing to reach out with your spiritualism and this figure moves forward and Vinat's head is fully like out of the creature um imagine like he was almost in a in a stockade that's kind of the shape of how he's being held right now and Aurora places a hand on either side of his face and leans their forehead into Vinat's and just says, It's been a long time, my love. You can rest. And when you sleep, in truth, this time I'll get to see you again. And Alyssa, as you're about to reach out, you almost instinctually reach out with a hand to place it on this thing. And as your hand moves, you feel this warmth envelop it as this figure of light clasps one of your hands in both of hers and says, I'm going to need your help with this, if you please. And pulls you up beside her at the base of the tree. Mm -hmm. And then Aurora is going to look at Barry and say, Good Sir Craftsman. Natural focus. Do me the kindness providing me last shard in your possession. As I believe you've I had look. two shards. Yes, I have. I give her I give her the one I took from the earth. There is she, she takes it and then there's this odd moment where the hand that took it remains but a second arm splits off from it and moves to hold that crystal at about chest level with Vinat.
Annika, mm -hmm. Rue, I'm going to need to borrow your plates. Uh, yeah, it's still on fire, by the way. I haven't stopped it. So yeah, it's... no, it's it's perfectly fine. I... Aurora, I'm afraid that's kind of not how it works. It's not a... instrument that you can just... Well, I mean, I suppose I could, but the point being... I am the blade you were asking for. Mm hmm And Aurora just says, I understand. What would you... What would you have me do? There's a moment where Aurora waits and thinks, and then says, I need all of your help. To sever Vanat's ties to these other entities. Rue, you and Danica are to assist me in severing it from the giant. Barry's crystal will act to sever him from the Bane Horde. And Alyssa will be the force pulls him back to us. Hmm. Well, the sword does one thing particularly well. Um, it separates the soul from the body, if that's what you're wanting me to do. Yes. Hmm. I think we can do that. If you Doesn't can. sound too hard. So, the way this is going to work is, Barry, you are asked to hold and prepare to literally shove this crystal into the black. Annika and Rue are asked to post up almost behind this amalgamation of entities. And on the timing, we'll take two strong cuts to sever the tree trunk, so to speak. Can I um, sub an order here mm -hmm. to make it one giant sword instead? Fine, but you both have to swing it at the same time because of the anime of it. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. And then in that moment, Alyssa, you and Aurora are going to pull. So, Danica, um, from what I understand, this place is a dream, and this area is just as much my domain as the other places that we've been while we're here. So I am going to try to do a thing. Um, it's going to be weird, it's going to be weird, but... Um, it's you, it's always weird, yeah. I, I think we can, I think we can do this. I'm going to ask the storyteller, and um, as I do this, I'm going to try, I'm going to spend the rest of my potential. I would like to become in this dream space for this one thing that we are about to do a being of pure soul forging energy and I am going to join myself to Danica yes this is what happens okay. when you give us all this potential crow. I mean I gave yeah. it to y'all for a reason um so what this looks like is simple. like this kind of actually like um like this ethereal being that's super imposed over danica and her sword has like um a larger pale green version of itself super imposed over the blade she's so, currently holding. so you're becoming sasuke susano from naruto you're yeah. Yes. okay yes. 
<laughs> DM. Yes. Since Aurora is assisting me in pulling the knot from, then I will uh, pull back two of my potential because, like, this yeah. is a lot of potential being spent, and I don't think I need that much to help succeed. Ah, oh, that's fair. Um. So. Oh. I will say there's an odd moment of peace and communion between Danica and Rue in this instance, where it is two people sharing both a goal and purpose overlaid onto each other in this space. And there is a comfort in that as you both prepare this strike. There is a few moments of calm. And then you all just feel the moment to go. There is no command. There is no synchronicity. You all just act. So first, I'm going to say, Barry, what does it look like when you press this crystal to this tree? Um, so... Barry doesn't so much as press the crystal. He like he's cupping it in his hands and he's like, Hello, little star. I just need you to grow a little. Your roots are strong enough. Um, and from this sort of lotus shaped plant, like um its roots extend into the um uh, around the, the black crystal and like most plants will break down rock to get to the good soil. Mm -hmm. It sort of latches on and starts constricting it. Okay. And with that, you see this crystal is constrained and pulled away bit by bit. And you see the knot start to be uncovered. Annika and Rue, what does your strike look like as you sever the top of this tree away from the knot? I have both hands on the handle of my sword, and it's a solid downswing. Um, and like following in the wake of like the sword, our trail of flowers. Okay. You hear a crack, and like the tree has been struck by lightning, you hear it split from above Vanat's head in half and the two pieces fall to either side. Alyssa, you feel the moment to grab on and pull, and it's less of a physical grab and more of willpower. And you know that the two entities fighting to use Vinat as a host are pulling back. What does your pull look like? So, a lot of Alyssa's magic has been this very, like, sort of, um, sort of smoky quartz-esque gray a lot of the times, but for this moment, it's different. It's thin, thin threads of gold that mix in with the smoky ports and a, a sort of clearer quartz in and of itself. And it's not just her pulling, it's her pulling with 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 her old childhood memories. She's going to sacrifice a few of her memories with the knot to give him something to latch on to. Okay. You pull on these memories and you watch as first a single thread of this entwined gold and crystal quartz strikes out from your chest to his. And then the more you think back on these memories, these almost like spider strands reach out from your fingertips, your chest, your shoulders and latch on to him. And Aurora, once again, 
puts her forehead to his, kind of floating in space, and just says, Come back to me. And you feel those threads go taut between you two. And then there's a shattering of crystal and a breaking of wood. And both the tree and the stone dissipates. And Vinat is left in the middle of this serene space, kneeling. Dazed, confused, almost entirely unaware of what's going on around them, wearing a tattered linen shirt and pants, seeming perhaps a little gaunt. And as Vinat kneels, the glowing figure of Aurora turns to all of you, and it's a little bit tough to tell facial expressions. There's not a whole lot of detail to this figure because of the light. Now, Aurora, we both know we can't let that whole thing end like this. I think you two have waited for a very long time. So, while you're here, I would like to see if I can give you a few more moments somehow. Storyteller, I would like to temporarily give, or like, I would like to give Aurora one minute in this space in a corporeal form. Okay. Make a soul forging check for me. Okay. How well you do will determine how long the corporeal form lasts. Well, I drew three soul forging cards. This was the best one. It's good enough. Or we'll get the full 60 seconds. And there is a moment where more of that light gets drawn down from the sky. If I if I can. Go for it. I would like to have Aurora go. I would like to offer Aurora a hand and say, would you accept this gift from me? Without words, there is a wash of emotional appreciation over all of you as Aurora clasps that hand between both of her own. And then you would see, like, all of the Aurora lights that um, our storyteller has described kind of gathering to Aurora, but also from the tips of my fingers, you start to see, like, her take on a corporeal form, and it just continues spreading backward and away from me until it... Um, crowns her head and reaches the soles of her feet. So now here is um, like Aurora actually being Aurora for a whole 60 seconds. And all of you see a figure, pale skin, a smattering of freckles across her face, long blonde and brown hair that's sort of very mixed with no clear patterns or anything to it delicate features and, again, wispy thin, wearing a very simple kind of frock dress and that wide, sort of off-white sun hat. You have a very nice hat, and you also don't have very long. Now off you go. I'll just be spying over here elsewhere. <laughs> With tears in her eyes, Aurora nods, and then goes over to Vinod. She kneels, and while you don't hear what she says to him, you do hear him almost sob out the words. You've been gone so long. Ooh, he's ugly crying. He's, he's very ugly crying. And in these 60 seconds, the only other words you all hear is... I haven't been able to dream of you for 200 years. The 
please don't go again. And they share a quiet moment where they hold each other. And then Aurora's corporeal form starts to fade. And the space around you all starts to fade. And you all find yourselves standing, surrounded by tearing spirits and woodland Navaniads. There is a slightly battered and bruised looking Halcyon and Adira celebrating your success as you all crowd around and kneeling and silently weeping Vinat. I would like to walk over to Vinat. And um, I am going to, I would like to use, um, you know, something. I think I'm just going to try to be quiet. You know, with all the cheering, it shouldn't be very hard. Mm hmm She's never been far from you, and hasn't been for a very long time. And I have it on good authority that maybe you could see her more often, but whatever this nonsense was that got you trapped in whatever that was, don't do that ever again or Alyssa herself is going to kill you. You hear there I go. Oh shit. <laughs> there is Vinat in this instance is like silently weeping but doing that thing where they are crying while smiling. Aww. Is Vinat clothed? Yes. Yes. Wearing a linen shirt and simple pants. He's over here crying in right. Baka. <laughs> We are going to end this session as Vinat looks up at you, Rue, and says, I've died a thousand times and could never get to see her again. And because of you, today feels like the first time I've lived in 200 years. Being alive is a magical thing. And I think... I, I want to do one more thing. I want to do one more thing. Absolutely. Because I'm super sappy and because we haven't done... Can Danica kiss Halcyon? Just waiting for it. Yeah, was... do it. There is this moment where Halcyon has no idea what's gone on here and is shocked to see a wounded and desolate Vinat. And you just sort of, there's this moment where if we were taking this from Halcyon's perspective, like first person, Halcyon has just pulled off their helmet and dropped it and is tired and exhausted after fighting God knows how many nightmares. And then you just slide into frame out of nowhere, Danica. And he says, he's about to say something, and it just is lost in both the cheers and the suddenness of the kiss. And and when when I when when, when, Based when I pull, yeah, uh, when I pull away, I uh, says, I love you too. And a few people hear that, and you notice there are new people here that were not part of the battle initially. They wear armor that is forged of beetles. And you notice... I have... Off screen. Wait, wait, wait. Off, let's let off, girls finish. Let wait, girls finish. Off screen, Rue has a brief moment of going, you know what, I should... No. <laughs> We're good with this. There is a loud cheer over this. 
but around you appear to be reinforcements that came a little bit late in Alpalcian. As you see members of Dreadwatch who share his armor. As you full out uh, battle smooch their general, that is where we're going to end our season finale. I like With Barry saying, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, I feel like Alyssa would have eventually faded out and away. Uh, pulling her Nyxergy and just trying going. to quietly sneak. Not yeah. Alyssa trying to quietly sneak away out of frame and have a dark loner moment. Just be happy, Alyssa. Be happy. <laughs> God. Like, <laughs> seeing people but... being joined with their long lost lovers. Just be not miserable for one episode. Ah. <laughs> You do realize the moment that you pass out, I'm going to be able to find you and I'm going to make you miserable, right? Don't try me. With that said, as Alyssa fades into the background once again, um, well, let's get back to our main screen. Uh, thank you for joining me, my friends, on this adventure. Uh, remember, everyone watching, we are going to be taking a break till probably about October as I just get life figured out um or mid-season break as it were and um <laughs> tell people where they can find all your lovely faces seeing rainy road nins hi my name is Inziak. um i do um variety streaming here on twitch so if you want to find me there you can find me in fact tomorrow <laughs> in tuesdays at 8 p.m eastern you can also find me on the major landing channel doing tech talk thursdays also at 8 p.m eastern so uh Come on in, um, come on in and come on through. We're playing Final Fantasy X tomorrow, in fact. Uh, this has been Rue for this season finale, doing all of the weird and magical things that Rue does, um, with both of our pronouns being both he and they, because we got to represent out here. Hi, um, I'm Rainy. I also stream here on Twitch. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Rainy Keys. Um, I've been taking a bit of a backseat because I am jug juggling two jobs, and that's also part of the reason for deciding how long our mid-season break is taking because uh i am foreseeably gone for the rest for the end of the month other than that you can find me on twitter at rained keys i do art graphic design um a little bit of game design and i play Alyssa vesper both of our pronouns are she they and almost got reasons for kind of slipping away at this moment let's just say that And I am in row. Oh, I'm warm. Anyways, my, my pronouns are he, they. You can find me on Twitter at Monroe98, where I am a writer, editor, sensitivity reader, and game designer. And in August on thir this month, on Thursdays, y'all can find me at TTRPG, that's T-A-T-R-P-G's channel, where we'll be playing Monster of the Week. Hey, and nice. I am playing Danica, whose pronouns are she, they. Is Danica also in? monster of the week or somebody different no it's somebody different okay hi i'm glass of moby eggman <laughs> you can find me somewhere on twitter somehow um i play i play fifth hat leaf beard man <laughs> leaf beard person <laughs> in Asia. you can't find them on twitter they don't Bye. exist and I, <laughs> we love this quick change. Uh, and I have been your narrator, uh, Eldritch Crow, as always. You can find me at Eldritch Crow on Twitter or here on Twitch. Um, I've been on hiatus from personal streaming things for a bit just to get my life in order. Um, so I may stream things soon. Who knows? We'll find out. Um, and I have a bunch of game design things going on. So uh, keep an eye for that via Twitter. Thank you for joining us, everyone. This has been one hell of a season finale and i'm very excited to see how the epilogues go um again, there's gonna be feelings there will be a lot of feelings there will be. Mm -hmm. and uh i'm very excited for it so have a good day everyone have a good couple of weeks and we will be back uh at some point with those epilogues bye now <laughs>